Giants fans, we're about 50 days away from the week one matchup on Sunday Night Football against the Dallas Cowboys. If you are ready for the NFL season, I want you to hit that thumbs up icon right now. Saquon Barkley replacements. That's what we're talking about in today's video. You're watching New York Giants now by Chat Sports. I am your host, Marshall Green, with the Giants and Barkley unable to come to an agreement on some sort of long term contract by this past Monday's deadline. He is going to have to either play on the franchise tag or not sign the franchise tag or sign it and end up sitting out the season. So in today's show, we're going to go through seven different players that I think could theoretically replace Saquon Barkley if he does sit out. Let's recap, though, what happened on Monday. How close was the deal to getting done? According to the New York Post and Ryan Dunleavy, the Giants and Barkley couldn't bridge a gap of less than $2 million in both average annual salary and guarantees over the first two seasons. Also, Ryan Dunleavy is reporting that the Giants offered Saquon two different deals on Monday. Monday morning, the first offer they made was $13 million per year, but the guaranteed money was just $19.5 million. Saquon Barkley, he turned that contract down. But the final offer that Joe Shane submitted to Barkley and his representation was $11 million guaranteed. So they actually went, excuse me, $11 million average annual value. So they went down in that regard in $2 million. But they also went up in guarantees by $3 million from $19.5 to about $22.5 million. And Saquon Barkley turned it down. And now... He may have to sit out the season if he wants to really stick it to the Giants. He went on the uh, on the uh, excuse me. He went on the on the money matters podcast and he said this quote: "My leverage is I could say f you to the Giants. I could say f you to my teammates and be like, you want me to show you my worth? You want me to show you how valuable I am to the team? I won't show up. I won't play it down. And that's a play I could use." Anybody who knows me knows that's not something I want to do. Is it something that's crossed my mind? I never thought I would ever do that. But now I'm at the point where I'm like, Jesus, I might have to take it to this level. And am I prepared to take it to this level? I don't know. That's something I have to sit down and talk to my family, talk to my team of advisors, and strategize about this. It does not sound like Barkley is going to report to training camp, so you're going to see more reps from guys like Matt Breida in training camp. Eric Gray, the fifth-round pick out of Oklahoma. Gary Brightwell, who was selected in the fifth round out of Arizona two years ago. Jay Sean Corbin, the undrafted free agent last year out of Florida State. You're going to see those four guys getting much more reps in training camp because number 26 in the former second overall pick, Saquon Barkley, will not be there. If Barkley holds out past training camp and misses games in the regular season, first man up is going to be Matt Breida for the New York Giants. He was signed by the Giants last offseason, played for them all 17 games, had 54 carries for 221 yards, 4.1 yards per pop, and a touchdown. Had a couple of big catches as well, especially towards the tail end of the season. He is one of the fastest running backs in the NFL. When he gets going north and south, he can really take it the distance, but he's not someone that is a bell cow back. And you see that through the last four years, he has never had more than 123 carries in a season. So I actually think it would be somewhat of a split backfield and split rep count between Brita and the rookie Eric Gray. And I'm going to be laser focused on the former Oklahoma running back when training camp gets here in a couple of weeks. He was great for the Sooners this past year when he really got his chance to sign and be that featured back in the Big 12. 213 carries, almost 1,400 yards. He's also averaging 6.4 yards per carry, and he's someone that's a solid receiving threat out of the backfield as well. 33 catches, almost 230 yards, and 11 tutties on the season. When you look deeper than the numbers with Gray, though, that's the stuff that really impresses me. He had 727 yards this year for Oklahoma, after contact, he is not some guy that's easy to tackle. If you try to bring him down with an arm tackle, he's going to run right through that. He had 21 runs of more than 15 plus yards. He made 58 defenders missed, and he didn't drop one pass this last year 
for Oklahoma. I'm not sure he's ready to be that featured RB1 in a National Football League offense, but he is someone that I think can get it done at a solid level, and the duo of him and Matt Breida, while it ain't Saquon Barkley and it's not close, I don't want to misconstrue that, I think they could get the job done to a serviceable level. They are not Saquon Barkley, though, that's for sure. If you had to pick one of these guys, though, to be the RB1 when Saquon Barkley maybe holds out and skips games, he has until week eight to decide if he wants to play on the franchise tag or not. If he sits out games, who do you want to be the lead back? Type MB for Matt Breida, EG for Eric Gray. That'll be the pinned comment on today's show. So when you get hit with that YouTube ad break, scroll on down and let me know. Let's talk about some guys that the New York Giants could look to sign in an NFL free agency. Maybe they rescind the tag to Barkley. They get word he's not going to play, and they want to add another running back. Well, the best available is Dalvin Cook, who has spent his entire career with the Minnesota Vikings. When you look at the stats, it may be a little perplexing when it comes to why did the Vikings move off of this guy? Four straight seasons of over 1,000 yards. Four straight seasons of over 4.4 yards per carry. And he has 14 TDs over the last two years. And in the prior two years to that, he had 29 touchdowns. Still a really good running back, but he's more so a home run or nothing back at this point. He was one of the league leaders in rushes of less than one yard. So he's a guy that's yards per carry that has gone down each of the last three seasons but he might be a little bit, bit too expensive for the Giants at this current point, and I think he's going to sign with the Miami Dolphins. What about bringing in a guy that the Giants know all too well about because they've played him two times each year since he's been in the NFL? What about Ezekiel Elliott? The Dallas Cowboys moved on from him earlier this offseason, and kind of like Cook, his production has dipped almost every single season in the NFL. It's like his best season was his rookie year, and then ever since that, the value in the production has gone down. In 2019, he was averaging 4.5 yards per pop. That's down to 3.8 yards per carry. He's still a touchdown machine. He's still one of the best blocking running backs in the NFL, and he's definitely one of the best goal line and short distance running backs. I honestly would like to bring in Zeke if we get word that Saquon Barkley is not playing. Yeah, at least get two revenge games against the Dallas Cowboys. And I think you could run kind of a three-headed monster in that backfield with Ezekiel Elliott, Matt Breida, and Eric Gray. I mean, what, 22 touchdowns over the last two years? He's someone that has a nose for the end zone. But if you had to pick one of the two guys that we've already talked about in today's video to sign and be the Giants back if Barkley skips games this year, who would it be? Is it Dalvin? Is it Zeke? Type their initials down below of the guy you want. Another back that piques my interest that's available in free agency. What about Kareem Hunt of the Cleveland Browns? Spent the past couple of years with the Browns and kind of a recurring theme here. I mean, there's a reason that these running backs are available and it's almost August. They are not the same guys that they were just two or three years ago. Like Zeke and like Cook, Kareem Hunt's yards per carry pretty much have gone down each of the last four years. 2021, he only had 78 carries, so I don't think the sample size is big enough there. But he is someone that is still a solid running back, and I like the versatility that he brings. Not only is he an in-between-the-tackles runner, he's someone that excels in the passing game. And in this Mike Kafka and Brian Dable offense, they want to get the ball to their playmakers in space, and a guy like Kareem Hunt could be a threat out of the backfield. This past year for Cleveland, 35 receptions, 210 yards, and three touchdowns, five receiving touchdowns in 2021, six in 2020. The guy can get in the end zone, whether it's through the tackles or through the air. What about another guy? What about a former Alabama running back in Kenyon Drake? This is someone that is younger than most of these guys that we're talking about on this screen and in today's video, but he's someone that I like because he's still an explosive threat. This past year, he had averaged 4.4 yards per carry, had four touchdowns in limited reps, right? Only 109 carries, but he's someone that can go the distance. And when the Giants played against the Baltimore Ravens, Kenyon Drake kind of had a couple of pop plays against us. And the Giants need more explosive plays, one of the least explosive offenses in the National Football League last year. And if you lose Saquon Barkley, you're going to lose a lot of those explosive plays on the ground. And Kenyon Drake could at least try to replicate some of the things that Barkley does. We have one more running back to talk about, but first, 
I got to make sure you guys are subscribed because I don't want you missing out. If the Giants make a move, we are going to make a video. Shoot, if the Giants sign any of these guys we're talking about in today's show, we are going live on the channel. So subscribe and turn your notifications on so you never miss a thing. And we also have an awesome deal going on today. If you go to chatsports.com slash Giants hat combo, you can get a hat and a cap for less than 25 Bucks. The deal's not going to last forever, and I want you to rep your team in swag and save some cheddar. Go to chatsports.com slash Giants hat combo and get a hat and a t-shirt for less than 25 bucks. The last player we're going to talk about in today's video is Leonard Fournette, a.k.a. Playoff Lenny, a.k.a. Lombardi Lenny. Thing is, he's not the guy that was coming out of LSU and was a top 10 pick when he went to Jacksonville. This past year for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, he was just okay, if not below okay, and maybe even a bad running back. Anytime your yards per carry is less than 3.7, that's a problem. But one thing I do like about Leonard Fournette is, and maybe that's just because of the Tom Brady effect, he had 73 catches for 523 yards. We know Tom Brady likes to dump it down to his running backs. He's versatile. We know he runs hard through the tackles, and maybe he could be a short distance or goal line back for Big Blue. But at the end of the day, None of these options that we've talked about outside of Eric Gray and Matt Breida are all that great. They're not sexy. They're not Saquon Barkley. That's why Barkley wanted to be paid because he knows he can do things on this football field different than almost any back in the NFL. He's not some guy that's just replaceable, and he's not. And I think the Giants know that. But at the end of the day, the Giants are perfectly fine with Barkley being on the franchise tag, especially if he's going to suit up and play ball games. But if Barkley misses games, if he sits out, the two guys I would sign from this video would either be Ezekiel Elliott. I think he's got something to prove. I feel like he feels like he got his career cut short and was done wrong by the Dallas Cowboys. And like I said earlier, you get two revenge games from Zeke against the Cowboys. That would be good enough by itself. And I like the versatility that Kareem Hunt brings as a receiving threat and a guy that can put it up inside the tackles and really be a yards after contact machine. What about you, though? We talked about seven guys. Name a running back the Giants should sign or trade for. Clyde Edwards Hilaire is the guy that could potentially be on the trade market. We've talked about him on the channel before, but I want you to name a running back the Giants should add via trade or free agency in the comments down below. As always, I just want to say thank you, and I appreciate you guys for rocking and rolling with us here on Giants Now by Chat Sports. We appreciate everybody that tunes in and especially watches to the end and if you did watch to the end today i want you to comment real one down in the comment section so i know who finished the video